So last time, we had this. Transformation. I don't know why I'm writing so big all of a sudden. Anyway, last time we had this transformation, and I actually worked it out in Mathematica and proved it to you, right? Where if you had a, a matrix of the eigenvectors Q times a diagonal matrix where the eigenvalues are on the diagonal, lambda, times Q inverse, that would give you back the original A matrix, right? The A matrix being the matrix in which we started with when we solved the eigenvalue problem. So this thing is called an eigenvalue decomposition of A, right? So you'd say, you know, in, in words, what's on the right side of the equal sign is the eigenvalue decomposition of A, okay, of the matrix A. So if we just manipulate this a little bit with some algebra, and specifically matrix algebra, and if you remember what I said, when you're multiplying vectors and matrices, it, it doesn't matter which side, you know, like, so if you multiply an equation by a scalar, it doesn't matter if you multiply on the right or the left, right? But when you multiply a matrix equation by a matrix, it does matter. So I can't multiply something on the left side of A and on the right side of Q inverse there. That would not be equivalent statement. So just be, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply on the left side of both equations with Q inverse. Okay? Well, what, what is any matrix times its inverse? Huh? It's the identity matrix, you said it. Right? So this is the same thing as the identity times lambda times Q inverse. And the matrix, the, the identity matrix times any matrix is just that matrix. So if I group these two terms over here, the identity matrix times lambda is just lambda. So that's equivalent to lambda Q inverse, right? And so then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply now on the right side by Q, right? So over here, I still have Q inverse A, and I'm going to multiply on the right side by Q, and on the right side over here by Q. And again, I have the identity matrix. The identity matrix times lambda is just lambda. And over here, I have Q inverse A Q. And so, remember and what remember what what property does lambda have? I mean, what is lambda? Remember, it's just a, a matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. So the property that I was referring to is that it's a diagonal matrix. Right? And so, what this use this is a useful identity because what it says is that a matrix of the eigenvectors. If, if you use this, so if, I, if, if I'm given a matrix A, and I know what the eigenvectors of A are, which in this case are Q, then I can diagonalize A. So if I just transform A with its eigenvectors, then I can get a diagonal matrix. And this is how we'll use it in the context of stress, because in, in, in the context of stress, as we'll see in the next two lectures, the eigenvectors are the principal directions of the stress tensor. And the principal directions are things that we can either measure or infer, okay, like in the field. We can measure or infer the principal directions. So then we sort of know the eigenvectors, and we can then take any stress tensor, if we're given the stress tensor, and we can measure or infer the eigenvectors, the principal directions, then we can get the principal stresses, which is the diagonal, um, the diagonalization of the stress tensor. We'll we'll see all this a lot more in in examples later, but I just wanted to talk about that briefly. So, um, to finish up our discussion of linear algebra, uh, let's just talk about how vectors transform. So, we're going to do quite a bit of this in a class, and so. If I'm given a, a coordinate system, we'll just call it X and Y, and then I rotate that coordinate system. So uh, let me use a different color, I guess. So 
So if I rotate that coordinate system and I call the rotated coordinate system x prime and y prime, and if I know the angle in which I rotated them, right, then what I want to do to determine exactly how uh, vectors rotate is I want to write down I want to write down the x prime and the y prime coordinate systems in terms of x and y. And I guess let me just for a second discuss why we want to like what we're going after here. Give you some physical context. So <clears throat> um, coordinate systems are completely arbitrary. They are the modeler decides how to lay down the coordinate system. Right? Now, <clears throat> in geomechanics, there's at least one coordinate system that is um, very natural. It's the one that overlays the cardinal directions, north, east. And you know, our, in, a, in a coordinate system, we always there are, it's always three right angles, right? And so if we have if we have a coordinate system north and east, then the other direction is either up or down. And we often use down because that gives us a right-handed coordinate system. You guys remember like the right-hand rule from mechanics or even from physics? So if you, if you use north and east and you want to have a right-handed coordinate system, then, then the, the other component is down. Right? So we can pick it arbitrarily, but a convenient one to use is north, east, and down. And it's convenient because you know later we're going to drill wells and, and do other things. And we can identify the azimuth of the well with respect to the geologic coordinate system. But then, eventually, we want to do mechanics problems. Like, we want to understand wellbore stability, for example. Well, it's most natural in a wellbore to talk about the components of stress in terms of a coordinate system that's co-located with the wellbore. And for that matter, it's even more convenient to use a polar coordinate system because you're talking about something that's round, right? And so what we can do then is, you know, we're going to measure or infer the coordinate systems possibly with respect to some geologic coordinate systems, and we need to do a series of rotations to get down into the wellbore, okay? And then we can solve the mechanics. Once we understand, like, how the stress that we measure in terms of our coordinate system that we laid down on the Earth, right? How that transforms into a stress in the wellbore, then we can determine if the wellbore is going to fail or not. Okay. So while right now we're just kind of writing down some mathematical expressions, that's where we're going with all this, right? We're trying to understand first how vectors transform under rotations or changes of coordinate systems, and then how matrices, or in our case the stress tensor, which will sort of idea we'll look at, we'll uh, treat like a three by three matrix. So <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> if I write down what x prime is, oops, if I write down what x prime is in terms of x and y, I have that, uh, we have x cosine theta plus y sine theta. So remember, like any, uh, you know, any vector can be composed of its components, right? And so the component, the component is like the projection, right? The projection down onto this axis, right? So this is x cosine theta, and this is y cosine theta. I'm sorry, y sine theta. That's just geometry. So that's that's x prime in terms of x and y, and then I can write y prime also in terms of x and y. In this case, I have uh, minus x sine theta plus y cosine theta, <clears throat> and then I can write this. I can rearrange this and write it in matrix form, such that I have x prime y prime is equal to cosine theta, sine theta, 
minus sine theta, cosine theta, x times y. Okay. And so then if I call this whole thing, these are just the components. If I call that, you know, the vector v, and I call this, I'm sorry, v prime, and I call this the matrix Q and the vector v, then I have this equation. So a vector v will transform into a vector v prime through the rotation matrix Q. <clears throat> and so there's what Q looks like, again, where theta is the angle between V prime and V. <clears throat> Likewise, matrix matrices will transform the same way so that, you know, if you're given a matrix S and a rotation matrix Q, then S will transform into S prime via this transformation. And then like we just showed, if Q is chosen such that its columns are the eigenvectors of S, then S prime will be diagonal with its entries corresponding to the eigenvalues of S. So the eigenvector, a matrix of the eigenvectors diagonalize, can be used to diagonalize a matrix. So now we're done with <coughs> sort of abstract linear algebra concepts, and we're going to start applying these uh, in the context of stress. So let's begin our discussion of stress. <coughs> 